showing your faithfulness and obedience to the word of the Lord. If you give, God will bless you in so many different ways. All you have to do is trust him and be consistent in giving your tithes. Can we put our prayers to thank you? But the land where the ego is to possess is a land of hills and valleys, and drink your father of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year, even until the end of the year. In your entire strength.
somebody ought to declare that in this place. There's victory in the name of Jesus. Victory over my family. Victory over my mind. There's victory in the name of Jesus. announcements tonight. Tomorrow, the youth rally has been canceled. So in that case, we will be having pray and play in the youth room tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Bring your own snack and drink. Why don't you step out of your aisle and greet somebody in Jesus' name? If you're full of the Holy Ghost, why don't you give God a high praise? Clap your hands and give Him praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now, now if that would have been some celebrity, that would have been okay. But I saw some of you, you just acting cool. And I think we ought to give Him the praise that He's worthy of. What do you say? Come on, let's praise him like he's worthy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. I want to say how happy I am to see each and every one of you here in this house tonight. And I think it would be therapy to some of you for no reason at all right now. For no reason. You ought to just put a big smile on your face. Now, make the devil wonder, what on earth are they smiling about? And then look at him and say, wouldn't you like to know? Hallelujah. Has anybody got the victory in this house tonight? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm excited. I'm thrilled. We uh, we finished, well, we're very, very close to finishing up all the plans for uh, Double Portion, the Experience Conference this year. That's coming up in June. That will be June 29th and 30th. Thursday night, June 29th, Brother Cornelius Williams will be preaching that night. And we know how the anointing of God is on this man of God. And then Friday morning, Friday morning right here during the elders, it will be, it will be Bishop Tom Johnson that will be preaching the elders' service right here. I don't know what time that is. And then Friday night, it will be Brother Bart Atkins. And I am just absolutely ecstatic about this. I cannot wait to see what God has in store for us. And I'm just really thrilled about this. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me tonight to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4. In fact, is it possible for me to get a podium down here where I can get with you? This is more like a Bible study tonight. First Timothy chapter 4.
When you have it, say amen. And I'm going to look at verse number one of First Timothy chapter four. And I'm going to read till I feel like quitting. It's all good. It's the Bible. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter four, verse number one says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That means this is the subject that the Spirit is majoring on. This is emphasis on what the Spirit wants to communicate to the church. That in latter times, in later times, that's an old English word for later, or the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Everybody say seducing. And doctrines of devils. I was I was looking up a I was looking up a tutorial the other day on YouTube and I saw a video of a well I just saw it advertised I didn't play the video of some movie and so I read the caption below it and it was talking about demon possession I guess spirits and demon possession is getting really popular again but you know that's the sensational side of demon possession uh, the devil wants to portray himself as very educated very refined and very enlightened but the Bible says these are doctrines of devils no matter how much you put polish on it it's still doctrine that is contrary to the word of God and they speak lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron forbidding to marry and, command, and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth for every creature is of God for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving see there if I want to eat bacon for breakfast I can <laughs> praise God I want to teach for a little while tonight on seduction we're going to have a fun time tonight I'm going to teach on seduction but before I do that why don't you put your Bibles down and let's give God a high praise. Can we do that right now? Let's just clap our hands and praise Him. Tell Him how good He is and how much we love Him. Praise God. Praise God. We love you. We praise you. We honor your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I want to... Uh, I want to uh, deal with this because there's so much of it in our world. And it's really important. What really took me down this road, I, I thought, I, I, I want to do this. I've seen several uh, social media, uh, whatever, you know, I don't have Snapchat. I don't. Uh, about time I get one figured out, they come up with five new ones. And I guess Snapchat's old now. They got something new. And uh, it used to be Twitter, and everybody's tweeted out now. Nobody, everybody's too lazy to write anymore. All they want to do is say something verbally and put a picture. And. Uh, um, or some moving picture, some video shot that somebody has taken. So 
reels are very popular. And I have seen several reels where uh, young ladies that at one time walked with God, were baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, have shot reels of how that they have been set free from living a holy and separated life and that they are no longer in bondage and that they can uh, now with impunity violate, violate scriptural principles such as a woman having uncut hair and a man having cut hair which is black and white in the scripture First Corinthians chapter 11 is very plain that a, a woman's hair is her glory and that is to be uncut and a man's covering is the Lord Jesus Christ and so his hair is to be short and, and that the woman's covering is her hair it shows that she gives honor to those who are in authority, authority of her and so, uh, I, I'm not here to knock that, but I, I, I thought to myself, you know, some young ladies that love to live for God ought to make some reels about how that uh, they love living holy, and they love living separated from the world, and, and living a holy and a godly life, and young men as well. But as I was praying about this, and there's other situations, there are situations doctrinally. The Bible began to talk to me about this scripture here in 1 Timothy chapter 4 where he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. This is the main thing that God is dealing with. That in the latter days, later days, in the last times. Now are we living in the last times? How do we know we're living in the last times? The Bible says we're living in the last times. Where does the Bible say we're living in the last days? Well... In the New Testament, it says we're living in the last days in Acts chapter 2. But in the Old Testament, in Joel chapter 22, uh, the Bible talks about this last day. I'm not, somebody want to help me out here? I don't know exact. I don't want to read the whole book of Joel chapter 2. I mean the whole chapter. But I do want to see that he said, In the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and upon thy servants and upon thy handmaidens also will I pour out of my spirit is that Joel 2 28 through what 28 29 and then it gets into apocalyptic language how many of you young people know what apocalyptic means that means language of the last days of the days that are, will be the last days of humanity before God judges the earth. And so the Bible deals with this and tells us what the last days are. And then Peter, on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, tells us that this is that. When they, re, when they began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Ghost was poured out and, and the Jewish people of that day that were there in Jerusalem, they had never seen church like that before. And so uh, they began to realize this is special. So Peter gets up under the unctioning of the Holy Ghost and he says... This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, saith God. So Peter signifies that when the day of Pentecost started, that was the beginning of the last days. He says, well, that was 2,000 years ago. That means we're closer to the coming of the Lord than we've ever been. That was 2,000 years ago. And so these are the last days. In the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit. And Peter said, this is that. Well, you see these people talking in tongues? This is the pouring out of the spirit of God upon all flesh. How many of you glad we're living in the dispensation of the church? That he has pouring out his spirit. Praise God. You can have the Holy Ghost tonight. You don't have to leave here without the Holy Ghost. You can walk out of here full of the Holy Ghost. 
before we leave this house, we can baptize you in Jesus' name and God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And so Peter declares to us that these are the last days. And so Paul begins to define a lot of the uh, current happenings that will also declare and define unto you the last days. And he said, now the spirit speaketh expressly. The spirit is dealing th with this in detail. That in latter days or in the last days, some shall depart from the faith. And they will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits. Seducing spirits. Spirits. Now that word seduction is a very powerful word. The word seduce. Uh, it has its origins in the middle French language and then it was picked up and coined by the Latin language which is a very common language. It was the Latin language that the Romans spoke and many people that speak Spanish today, the root of your Spanish language is Latin. The root of your French language is Latin. The root of your Italian language is Latin. That's why many, the root of the Portuguese language is Latin. The Spanish language has been very influenced by Arabic. That's why there's such a major difference between the Spanish language. Y'all are getting all kinds of good teaching tonight. Uh, the, the Arabic heavily influenced the Spanish language because the Moors ruled the Spanish-speaking people for over, over 500 years, almost 600 years. And so they incorporated a lot of Arabic in the Spanish language. That's why there's a major difference between the Spanish uh, language and the Portuguese language, which is spoken in Brazil, Portugal. Portuguese is spoken in Brazil, and there, I think there may be one other uh, country in South America that speaks Portuguese as well, but I do know Brazil, that is the language there. Uh, why, why doesn't Portuguese, why wasn't the Portuguese influenced by the Spanish language? Because the Moors never conquered Portugal. Uh, they only conquered Spain and, and other parts of that. So, you now have your history lesson, you all have etymology. Man, we're doing etymology. We're doing all kinds of stuff here tonight. So, seduction is from the French word, and it literally means to lure away. When you seduce someone, you lure them away from something else. Now, normally when we think of seduction, we think of... Uh, we think of it relationally and sexually and to seduce someone is to cause them to leave their mores, their morals. This is what they believe but you are luring them to violate their morals. You're luring them away. Their morals are saying no, no that's wrong but they are presenting something to you that is appealing to your flesh and so you acquiesce to it you have been seduced come here brother Isaac and let's see here I'm going to make a real prevalent here tonight Come here, Nikki. Now, I don't know. I would guess that at his age, Isaac's probably got his eyes on some ladies or a particular lady. This is going to be real felt tonight. I'm going to give you lessons on seduction. Now, I don't know if Nikki knows anything about that. They're good enough friends that I can use her for this. That's why I chose her. These two have fought like brothers and sisters for God only knows how long. Actually, the Holy Ghost talked to me about this in my office tonight. And so, 
Nikki, I want you, now this is all in just playing fun. Uh, you are going to try to take Isaac away from his girlfriend. Now, for the sake of this message, this is all in play. Isaac, you're going to acquiesce. So here we go. I don't, I don't know how you do it, Nikki. Maybe you bat your eyes at him. You know the, the, the womanly wiles that women have. Y'all are feeling this, aren't you? Now, come on now. you got to play the role. This is play acting. You know, you're calling him up on the cell phone. And, and for a minute, for a minute, Isaac is, he's resisting. But, he's resisting, but, but his mind begins to work. Am I going to give in? She sure is pretty. She really is pretty. Man, I like the tone of her voice. But in the back of his mind, his mind is telling him, yeah, but you said you got another girlfriend. Now, come on, we're, we're inching closer. And, and so he's kind of, you know, he's like the old Christian song says, torn between two lovers. <laughs> Feeling like a fool. Loving both of them is breaking all the rules. Come on, Isaac, you got to play the part. Oh, he's just struggling. He's struggling. He knows. He's got, he's got character in his life, and he's got, he's got loyalty in his life, and he's got integrity in his life, but, but he's torn. He's torn. He's torn. Until finally, he's got a good friend. Which one are you? I always get these guys mixed up. Brenton. Come on, Brenton. Brenton is Isaac's friend. And he hears Isaac talking to Nicky. And, and, and you hear it, and, you, and, and you, you, you grab him, and you say, What are you doing? Come on. No, you got to yell it. You got a girlfriend. And, and thankfully, Isaac gets a hold of himself. And everybody in here is just breathing a sigh of relief right now. Come on, you got to play the part. Whew. Perhaps there's a particular woman in this house that's really breathing a sigh of relief right now. I'm not looking around. I'm just... And he gets a hold of himself and we feel victory in this house tonight because Isaac got a hold of himself and he did not give in to seduction. He fought the battle. It was a hard fight. But he did not give in. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Nikki. But it, it's not always the guy. Come here, Sister Carly. Right there, Sister Carly. And uh, let's see, who's, who's really a good sport here? Come here, Brother Jonathan. You knew it was coming, didn't you? <laughs> Brother Jonathan, that's a... And, and you know there can be agents that aid in the seduction... Remember, Amnon had a friend. And Amnon thought it evil to, to rape his sister, Tamar. But he had a friend by the name of Jonadab. 
And Jonadab was the one that convinced him to give in to seduction. So Brother Jonathan here, he's going to play the seducer. And he's got influences. And he just happens to have Sister Carly's number. And, and he's calling her. And Sister Carly is, is torn because look at that curly hair. <laughs> Whoo! Look, look at that dignified manner of that man, Sister Carly. I mean, he, he just, he's got his act together. Is anybody feeling this? This is seduction, brothers and sisters. Now, it's at a light degree here. It can get it can get very, very dark. It can get to where, and thank God we're not going there with these young people tonight, but you can have young people telling you, oh, come on, give me your body. Come on, come on, come on, I love you. No, you don't love them. If you love them, you wouldn't want them to go into that kind of immorality. If you love them, you would give your life to keep them from going into that kind of darkness. And if you're a teenager, you know the battle. You know the battle right now. Man, he's a good-looking guy. And, and oh, oh. And she's looking at that phone, and, and, and she wants to pick it up and answer it. It's buzzing. It's buzzing. I wish I had real phones. I should have thought that all the way through tonight. It's buzzing. Somebody call. Somebody call. Sister, call. It's, it's, it's buzzing. Oh, it, she. Is it on? God, I've never heard a young person with their ringtone that low. It's buzzing. And she sees, it's Brother Jonathan. Oh, whoo. And she wants to answer everything in her saying, answer the phone, but inside of her. Now, if I'm not mistaken, she may have a, another guy around in her life. She's playing real innocent right now. This real innocent look right now. But, but it's ringing, it's ringing. Answer it, answer it, Sister Carly, answer it, answer it. Answer it. And the war rages. Is she going to give in to this? She, is she going to give in? But thank God she's got, she's got a friend this time. Sister Nikki's not the, she's not the rogue. She's the hero. Talk her out of it, Sister Nikki. She can't do it. Come on, Sister Carly. You're better than that. Come on. Come on. You don't play the field. You're not two-timing. Come on. Come on. You can make it. Hey, this is how... The Spirit is speaking expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith. The phone is ringing and there is seduction from the world. And the world is always appealing to your flesh, young man and young lady. It's always appealing to your flesh. The world always appeals. And so it will make the most amazing cases for you to disobey God. Your flesh is a master at making incredible it logical excuses for disobeying the word of God. Thank you, brothers and sisters. You may be seated. And, and I, used, I used people because that is one form of seduction. But let's go to Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7. And let's look at this. In your Bible, young man and young lady. And I don't know where, Brother Mitchell, would you help me out here, where the, the wise man is standing in the window, and in the window as he stands by night, he is watching. He is watching what is going on. Verse 6, let's start there, whoever's running the sound. For at the window of my house, I look, the wise man is looking through the window, and he is observing what goes on here. And I see, next verse please, 
among the simple ones, the ones that have no understanding, the ones that 2 Timothy chapter 2, the Bible says that Satan takes them captive at his own will. They are without understanding. The Bible calls them fools. How many of you want to be called a fool? I don't want to be a fool. But foolish people lack understanding. And they're always giving in to these seducing spirits. And he said, I looked and there was one passing through the street near her corner. And he went, uh, let's back up. I need to read that verse. Let's go back. And behold, among the simple ones I discerned among the youths, among the youths, a young man void of understanding. He didn't understand the ways of seduction. Maybe it was a young lady. Maybe I'm not talking to a young man tonight. Maybe I'm talking to a young lady. Maybe I'm talking to a lot of us tonight. Maybe I'm talking to a older lady or an older man. Behold, among the simple ones, they're passing through the streets. And they get around this seducer. Now, in this case, it's a lady. But in your case, it may be spirits. It may be voices. It may be Instagram accounts. It may be social media accounts. It may be people that portray themselves as religious on social media and talk about how at one time they used to live holy and separated like you do but they have been liberated you know what that is that's not liberation that's seduction that is a seducing spirit and that is doctrines of devils <laughs> passing near her corner and he went the way to her house she's beautiful it's always appealing to your flesh. You've got to get that in your head. Seduction is always appetizing. Is that a word? Bon appetit. In the twilight of the evening, in the black of the dark of night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. Now, why does she have the attire of a harlot? Because the attire of a harlot portrays the sensuality of the body, the sensuality of the flesh, always. So when you tell me you got liberated to show yourself off to another man that's not your husband or to another woman that's not your wife, you didn't get liberated. You got a seducing spirit. She had the attire of the harlot. Subtle. She was subtle. She was. She knew how to bat those eyelashes. She knew how to swish those hips just right. She knew how to accentuate the sensual parts of her flesh. And verse number 11, she is loud and she is stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. That means she's not loyal to her house. She'll go to any house. She won't stay in her church. She'll go from church to church. She'll, she'll just, whenever... Now is she without, now she's in the streets and lieth in wait on every corner. And she's not satisfied in the seduction of her own life. But she, the, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says the adulterer seeks the precious life. Now, I've got a whole lot of stuff going here right now. I'm not just talking about the sins of the flesh. I'm not just talking about adultery and fornication right now. I'm talking about seducing spirits, young men and young ladies. That's what this is talking about. Now she is without in the streets, and she lieth away at every corner. Verse number 13, please. So she caught him and kissed him with an impudent face. She's got her face all painted up. Did you know that's where painted face comes from? Is from harlotry. 
Don't take my word for it. Just check it out in, in history. And so she, she caught him and kissed him with an impudent face and said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day. I have paid my vows. What that means is I have, I have prepared everything for me to do what I want to do with you right now. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face. I have, I have found the one I want. I have chosen the one I want. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, carved works with fine linen of Egypt, and I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. And he had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Jesus is not coming back anymore. Come on, come on, come on. We don't have to live this way anymore. That's a bunch of nonsense. He's on a long journey. They've been talking about the coming of the Lord for so long. This is just a bunch of nonsense. You can live any old way you want to. You can, you can talk any old way you want to. You can, you can fill your conversation full of curse words and filthy jokes and all kinds of stuff that the Bible speaks about. Uh, what is it? Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of thy mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. That's, I'm quoting from the Bible. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 29. But oh, you don't have to talk like that. You can talk any old way. You can stab your brother in the back. You can talk about your brother. You can and talk about your sister you can act like you're better than they are you can act like you're worse than they are you can you, there is no the, the bible says that in the last na- days people would act like beasts they have no they have no they have no respect they have no dignity towards each other they have no courtesy towards each other they will they will slander one person at the drop of a hat they will talk about people they'll even talk about their brothers and sisters just to get ahead in their seduction just to get ahead in their seduction. Put that back up there, please. I'm not finished. And so she says to him, she says, she says, she says, Proverbs chapter 7, she says, read it, Brother Mitchell. There it is right there, with her much fair speech. Look at that word, speech. That word speech in the Hebrews is the word lekach. Lekach. It's from 339.47 if you have a strong concordance. And it is the it is the instruction. Every other place. In the Old Testament, it is either the word learning or the word doctrine. Four times it's the word doctrine. Four times it's the word learning. So with her much fair doctrine, with her much fair doctrine, she caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. I don't think all that's necessary. I think Pastor Elder's being overbearing with all of that stuff. I, I just, you know, I've been I've been studying some stuff myself. Yeah, where you been? Where you been drinking? Where you been studying? You been studying Trinitarians? You been studying Calvinists? You been studying Reformationists? Not apostolics. People that a long time ago were seduced away from the scripture and created a whole systematic theology that is totally contrary to the scripture. Is that where you've been studying? Have you been studying? He's getting close to God. Does he have the Holy Ghost? Is he baptized in Jesus' name? You know, that, that, that's popular today. Well, I think that's a step in the right direction. I think the step in the right direction is to do what the Bible says. Acts chapter 2, verse number 38 says, Repent 
and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the, if you're going to come out of seduction, if you're going to, if you're going to have deliverance, you got to start where the church started. Peter did not tell them, well, I think if you will follow some of these Roman poets for six months and then follow some of these Greek poets for six months and then finally come to the revelation that, and I'm not opposed to people finding God and however they, but I want to tell you, you're not going to find God the way you need to find God till you lay all that other stuff aside and you get in his word and you say, okay, God, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. I'm quoting from Psalms 119. Blessed are they that seek him, that keep his statutes. They walk in, they walk in, no, they, they, there is no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy steps. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with the brightness of heart when I have learned of thy righteous judgments uh, oh forsake me not utterly wherewithal shall a shall a young man a young lady cleanse her ways uh, by taking heed thereto according to thy word uh, thy word have I hid with my whole heart have I sought thee oh let me not wander away from thy commandments uh, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee But the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days you're going to see Him. You're going to see people you love. This is what's so hard about divorce, brothers and sisters. If you've never been involved in divorce, you need to thank God that you have never been involved in a divorce. I'm not saying this to wounds but the children posterity are all the ones that receive the, the, the hardships of divorce because they they are torn they love mama and they love daddy and then all of the all of the band-aids that you have to put on for it to happen well, mama loves you too, baby. I will live right down here. Yeah, but there's a rending and a tearing. And that's the side of seduction that the devil never shows you, young man and young lady. That's somewhere 10 years down the road when you look back and all of a sudden you see your kid and, and they're telling you that they are genderless. And you've got apostolic people that are being lured by the world. And they're, they're wanting to look more like the world and identify more with the world. And the world's entertainment is more important to them than the separation and the, and the devotion to God. And we have a good time. We're going to have a good time. I, I'm not talking about not having a good time. I'm talking about things that are contrary to the Word of God. I'm talking about seducing spirits that put on a patina of beauty. That, 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 did you know that's what makeup is? That's a patina. A patina is, is a false covering. It is just something that goes over the surface. The surface. A patina of beauty. It's just a patina. It's not real. Think about the word. Made up. Let me tell you something. I don't think there is a product out that can match that beauty right there. I'm going to tell you something. She still makes my liver quiver. Whew. When she puts that smile on, it just radiates. Now, she's trying her best not to smile right now. And, and that's in a natural sense. But what about the patina a beauty over false doctrine. I just think, I just think, the youth pastor. Now, right now, brother elders, the youth pastor. But when God gives us the right one, we'll have a youth pastor. 
I know y'all are crying. No, 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 Brother Elder, I get it. I get it. <laughs> but I can't do everything around here. But right now I am, and I'm enjoying it. But I want to tell you something. I, I just think the youth pastor is too radical. I, I just think, and then here's, here's, here's the other part. When you start giving into your flesh, when you start being seduced by the flesh, how long have I been going? Anybody, anybody know how long I've been going? Well, I'm not going all night. I'm hungry. Um, when, when you begin to realize, uh, how, how can I communicate this? Idolatry is always a work of the flesh. Idolatry is always sensual. Idolatry is always where your flesh gets to have its way. Your flesh wants to do, and then here's what your flesh does. Your flesh says, well, this is part of my walk with God. Praise God. Sis, why don't you take him out here? He'll be all right. Praise God. The flesh always wants to Make a the flesh always wants to make a a logical reason why this is permitted. Are y'all still with me? It's 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 okay. I know I know the pastor says it's in the Bible, but you know, I don't interpret the Bible that way. Well, the Bible knew that seducing spirit was coming. That's why the Bible says no scripture is of any private interpretation. We don't interpret the scripture the way we feel like interpreting the scripture. We allow the scripture to interpret the scripture. And, and the Bible's very plain about that. Now let's deal with it. I, I've had it out here in the ethereal, but let's deal with it in the real world. What are some seducing ways, young people, that are very, very tough for young people? Let me give you one of them immediately. Music. I will tell you right now as your pastor, I will never give in to hip-hop, rap. Never. Because I know where it comes from. It has no redeeming value to it. I won't give in really to real country and western and rock and roll because I know where those genres come from. They come from rebellion. Really, the, uh, there, there are musics that are redeemable. There's parts of jazz that are redeemable. There are parts of, of contemporary that are redeemable. There are parts of, of classical that are redeemable. There are part, but I'll tell you, my favorite music is just good old gospel music. That's my favorite music. It brings worship. It brings, it brings peace to my heart. Why? And, and I don't knock all that other stuff. You see, Brother Elder, look, brothers and sisters, I'm a musician. I'm an accomplished musician. My kids and I, we've, uh, some, of my, some of my kids' music that's been recorded are, are, are up to close to a million sales in places around the world and, and, and all of that. We sing. We love music. We, we, I, I, I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying I know what I'm talking about right now. I know exactly what I'm talking about right now. I, I'm, I, I, I love music, but I... I'll tell you this, music is one of the fastest ways I know if you're not careful for you to open yourself up to seducing spirits because music, music deals with the emotions and pretty soon you find yourself and you, and, and you are moving along with scriptures or, or with ver lyrics that are totally in rebellion to the word of God, that are totally against the word of God, that have nothing to do with God uh, and his ways and his spirit. And, 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 and I know I go on the... I go on the restaurants and I mean immediately I can hear I can hear lyrics and songs because my ear is tuned for it I have an exceptional ear for music and I can hear music 
And the lyrics of that song, easier than I can you talking to me. And, and, and so, I, I, I'm, not say, now, I'm not saying this to, you know, I'm saying, here's what, here's what the Apostle Paul said. Judge, you judge yourself. Why do you have to wait till I make a rule? I will make a rule if I have to for the continuity of this church, but it wouldn't it be awesome if the Holy Ghost started sweeping through our young people and you put away when the Holy... You, did you know there's even some Christian music? I listened to it for about two minutes. I said, that ain't Christian. I have to listen to it for 15 minutes before I figure out whether it's Christian or not. That's not Christian music. Christian music declares the Lord Jesus Christ. Right from the beginning. I, here's what Paul said in Romans chapter, what is it? Uh, Ro, Romans chapter 1 verse number 14, verse, verse 15 or 16. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, but it's also to us Gentiles. It came to the Jews first, but we have the gospel now. We're not ashamed of it. If it's really Christian music, it'll declare that it's Christian music right up front. It'll talk about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It'll talk about the redemption power of Jesus Christ. It'll talk about how great God is and how it's awesome for me to come out of the world and become who God has called me to become. Oh, let's clap our hands and praise Him. Watch some other ways of seduction, and I'm almost done. Entertainment. Entertainment. To entertain. Look up the word entertain. Where does it come from? That's why we speak out against Hollywood produced movies. Let me, let me submit this for your, for your perusal. Maybe you're online watching this. Maybe, maybe your leadership doesn't take a stand on this. I, I'm not out to cross swords, but for your perusal, think about this. I know I, I've been trying to do the research, and, and they used to put out a TV guide, but they may do. I don't know that anymore. I, I, I haven't seen one. I used to, I wouldn't turn on the TV, but I'd read the TV guide when I went into hotels because I wanted to know what the, what the movies are saying so I could preach about them because I don't watch them. Did you know almost 90% of the ones that I read about, even today as I'm Googling them, different movies and stuff today as I'm Googling them, they deal with the paranormal and witchcraft and sorcery, over 90% of them. And so the spirituality that they are educating your children from way down to way up, over 90% of them, the education, the spiritual education they're getting is to be a spiritual, not spiritual. A spiritual is to entertain any spirit. The first John chapter 4 said, Beloved, try the spirits and see whether they be of God. For there are many false prophets who have gone out. A false prophet is not just a man. A false prophet is a medium. It is media that brings spiritual influence in your life other than the influence of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God and the influence of Christianity. And if that is luring you, seducing you away, then it is seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Let me submit for your perusal that even the ones that they say are God, are, well, they don't, they're not godly, but they're clean. They're family oriented. Uh, some of them are, uh, uh, I can't even remember now, uh, Hallmark. Uh, what's the other ones? Uh, uh, now, even if you know it, you're not going to say it right now. Come on, tell me. Pure Flix. I see advertisement come out on, on my YouTube feed all the time called Pure Flicks. And, and, and I, I don't know, I haven't really delved into that. And, and, and they even have parental controls now. But, but think about this, brothers and sisters. This is, don't get involved emotionally right now. 
Because if, 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 you, if, if you are watching that stuff, you're already emotionally involved. You say, well, these are, these are pure, clean movies. But, but for your perusal, from everything that I've read and everything that I have seen in uh, a lot of these movies, is now it is common and it is not sinful anymore for them to live together before they are married. No, it's getting quiet in here. And, and, it, and, and when, when the church allows that without speaking out against it, then we are condoning that seducing spirit. I can't think of any spirit that is of greater seduction uh, value than a spirit teaching you that you can live together without being married. The Bible blatantly and openly calls that fornication. And the Bible says, let not fornication be once named among you. That's what the apostle wrote. Do not let fornication be named once among you. Don't give in to it one time, young man. Don't give in to it one time, young lady. Here's what else the Bible says. Flee fornication. Whether it's in the flesh or whether it's on your iPad screen. Whether it's in the flesh or whether it's on your phone. Flee fornication. Every other sin is outside of the body. But the Bible says the sin of fornication is against the body. What are you doing, pastor? I'm teaching you. I'm opening your eyes to the seduction. Remember? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm doing to you what Brenton did to Isaac. Come here. Brother Jonathan up here. Get, get a hold of him again. This is what Brother Elder is doing right now. Come on. What are you doing? Come, come, come on up here to you young ladies. This is what I'm doing. I'm getting a hold of you in the Holy Ghost saying, what are you doing? Pay attention. I know it's buzzing your phone and it's tempting you. I know it's trying to lure you away. I know that music, it sounds good. I know how tempting music is. I've had to come out of the music world. Uh, I, I laid it on an altar somewhere and I said, no God. Uh, no, I can't be involved in that anymore. And that's why we have a youth group like this. Uh, and that's why we're careful about our youth group. We're not better than anybody else, but we know the value of the Holy Ghost. We know the sacredness of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and we know, we know the power of seduction. And we love everybody. And we're going to keep reaching out to everybody. But I'll tell you this. That's why God gave us pastors. Is to preach like I'm preaching right now. Let's talk about something. Thank you. Brother Richard, if you'll come to the music, make these people think I'm closing. Let's talk about some other things that are seduction. Let's talk about the sports world. Now, do we get out here and mix it up and play basketball? Yeah, we do. We get out and play football. We love that. Volleyball, we like that. I think during, uh, I think during double portion we're gonna try to rent the ice skate rink so all you kids can go down there. We're gonna rent the whole rink that way we can play our music. And they were making fun about the lights and the. I don't care if they turn the lights on and the smoke machines. We're having a blast. That's a different story if we're having church. But if we're out playing, I don't care. Kid, you know, kids will be kids. Nothing wrong with having a good time. But when it becomes organized, when all of a sudden their uniforms have the rainbow sign, so they are openly telling you that this team is supporting the LQGBTIPAQARTS. Yeah. Yeah. Denver Nuggets are doing. Ooh, I just hit your idol. You, you notice their uniforms have the rainbow color on it? And, and you notice that when people make statements to stand up against homosexuality, those statements are not statements of hatred. We love people that are involved in that sin. Right here in this church, there are people that used to be involved in that sin, and they live incredible lives of victory and redemption, and the love of God has brought them out of that world. 
Don't tell me because I stand up against homosexuality that that's hate speech. That's redemption speech. That is anointed speech. In fact, I love you more than a lot of your friends. Because your friends will tell you there's no way out. Your friends will tell you once a homosexual, you're a homosexual. You're born that way. That's a, I got a theological word for that. It's called baloney. You weren't born that way. Everybody has the potential to sin. You just chose homosexuality. But you know what? If you'll come to this altar and you'll repent, God will set you free. Just like he'll set the alcoholic free. Just like he'll set the drug addict free. Just like he'll set the fornicator free. Just like he'll set somebody that's full of depression free. He don't care who you are. God will deliver anybody. That's his power. That's what he went to Calvary for. But when you get into that world now, you say, well, my kids are just playing Little League. Well, how do you tell them when all of a sudden they hit 13? Now, you can't do that anymore. Wouldn't it be better if we just taught them? Now, listen, brothers and sisters. I'm not one of these preachers that says, you need to quit that. Now, sometimes I don't have a choice. That's the only thing I can do. But I would rather replace something that is seduction with something that is real. I'm going to tell you something. The love that I have for this woman is real. It's real. Ooh, you guys have a regular menagerie here. You're not listening to me preach. Where did they get all these toys? Some backslidden parent. Oh, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. This this lady, let me tell you something. Can you believe it? As fat and as old and as ugly as I am, sometimes I'm riding on a plane. And some kooky woman that's lost her mind will come up and start that's a beautiful suit you got on there you have such a wonderful smile sir <laughs> on the front of my phone there's sissy poo. Then there's my daughter hugging me. Then there's my wife hugging me. And my grandbabies. Those are all ammunitions against seduction. The minute that Satan comes in and says, Woo, she's fine. Well, that don't happen to you, Brother Elder. Yeah, it does. It happens to you too, so don't act like it don't. phone and I start showing them let me, let me show you Pai Pai she's four now she's my grandbaby I'm not telling the person this but in the back of my mind I'm saying how can I look her in the face and walk away from such a precious little thing and then I'll flip over to my wife's beautiful face haven't seen her in a few days I can't wait till I get home what are you doing I'm drawing a line in the sand against that spirit of seduction. I'm telling that woman in the street, you better go back and find somebody else. I do understand. I do understand the, 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 the final, the final retribution of giving in to that spirit. And I'll tell you something else. I was just in a land that is full of idolatry. And right in the middle of that church, Brother and Sister Hicks, Brother James was here, Brother Mitchell, right in the middle of that church was seducing spirits that were trying to say, we can get along. This is for all of us. We can get along. Well, you know what? I love everybody, but I'm not getting along with seducing spirits, brothers and sisters. I'm not. You know what I did? I pulled out my pictures. I pulled out my billfold. And I said, 
Let me show you who my God is. His name is Jesus Christ. He's not three different separate people, but he's one God. He's the Father in creation. He's the Son in redemption. He's the Holy Ghost in the church. He is separation. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith God. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you unto myself. And then he said, and I will be a father unto you, and you will be children unto me. That's what he said. I'm not playing with those spirits. Let's stand. Yeah, they're attractive to me. Even if you could find it in the book of Revelation, when John saw that harlot. Does anybody remember that? When John saw the harlot, she was so fresh from her persecutions of God's people that she had the blood of those saints coming out of her mouth. That's how fresh her persecution and her torture was. What chapter? John, uh, Revelation chapter 17, what verse? Verse 6. Look at this. This is seduction all the way in the end time. And I saw the woman. She was drunk with the blood of the saints. She was killing saints. She was destroying their faith. She was seducing them. Oh, you don't have to live that way. Oh, you don't have to walk that way. You don't have to be separated from the world. You don't have to control what goes into your mind. You don't have to control your behavior. She was, she was drunk from taking down saints. So drunk that she still had the blood of the saints coming out of her mouth with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and look at this she's got the blood of the saints on her mouth and he said I wondered when I saw her I wondered with great even with the blood on the saints she was so beautiful she was attractive she was so attractive come on she was like a black widow a black widow kills her mate every time. Every time after they consummate their relationship, she kills. That's the way these seducing spirits are. And if you finish that chapter, the Bible says to the young man, Go not thou unto her, young man, because her way goes down into the it. Her way goes down. You didn't get liberated. You're going down. You got seduced. You didn't. You're, you're not experiencing the redemption of God. You're you're experiencing the delusion of deception, doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. And I'm I'm here imploring and pleading with you tonight. Come out of that. Come out of that. Come to a red hot altar. Come back into a Holy Ghost field service. Come back in here. Where Jesus uh, is reaching for his children. Come back in here where God's holy power is flowing in a mighty way. Come back into the presence of God uh, where he can set you free. Where there's young people around you that will say, stop, get a hold of yourself. Stop. Uh, uh. Hey, you're not going to get victory by missing church. You're going to get further and further and further away from God. The way you're going to get victory is you're going to come and you're going to spend time in the presence of God. Uh, you're going to spend time around people that love you. Well, they got all kinds of mistakes. They're, that's why we have the church is because we're full of mistakes. But I'll tell you this. Us mistake-filled people are also filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and where the Holy Ghost is, uh, there's redemption. And where the Holy Ghost is... Uh, there's deliverance and where the Holy Ghost is there is power oh let's praise him and let's worship him right now come on let's praise him and let's worship him right now let's praise him I feel the Holy Ghost in this place 
I feel the Holy Ghost reaching for somebody tonight. Maybe the enemy has tried to seduce you, but God is saying, no, no, get a hold of yourself. Hang the phone up. Don't talk to him. No, come and spend time with me. That's the best way to overcome seduction is to go to the people that you love and that you're faithful to. Go to the God that you love and you're faithful to. Go to the church that you love and you're faithful to. Go to the people that you love and you're faithful to. That's how to overcome seduction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, young lady. Come on, young man. Come on, that's it. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. 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 of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 that's it young man that's it young lady that's it young man that's it young lady come on draw the line in the sand let the devil know let the devil know who you are. He is my God. I'm not ashamed to call him Lord. That's it, sister. That's it. God's moving in this altar in a mighty way right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. That's it, brother. That's it, sister. We love you. We praise you, oh God. We love you. We worship you, oh God.
one of the signs that you're given in to seduction is confusion write that down one of the signs that you're given in to seduction is confusion well I'm confused it's because you're letting your guard down and is God the author of confusion no he is not the author of confusion so anytime confusion is at work in your life there is demonic activity that is at work in your life young man and young lady you're, the power of God in you is according to your faith not your pondering I don't ponder about the Godhead I know who God is his name is Jesus Christ there are no other gods Allah is not God Buddha, Allah didn't even come into being until 600 years after Christ died and was buried and was resurrected. And actually the guy that created the Muslim faith was studying Christianity and all he had for his guidelines was a bunch of gobbledygook from the, Reform the Reformation. Wasn't quite that far in yet. But it was people that were just the apostate people that were straying away from if he'd have had good apostolic counsel I, I was reading a book the other day I was reading a book this week and when uh, uh, what's his name uh, Magellan Fernando Magellan is that his name Ferdinand 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 Magellan uh, he tried to circumnavigate the world he didn't quite make it he got to Cebu Philippines and they killed him over there he didn't quite make it back to India. But when he got to India the first time when he was fighting in the wars for the Spanish, when he got to India, there were Christians there that were not Catholics and they were not Protestants. They had come directly from the Apostle Thomas. They were apostolics. I read that in a history book the other day and I freaked out. I said, yes, God, it's always been around. It's there. There's people that believe in Jesus Christ. They've always been around. And so, you, you, we're not confused over this. I'm not confused over whether I need to be baptized or not. The Bible is clear. It says it. Except the man be born of the water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Can't do it. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not confused about living holy and separated from the world the Bible says come out from among them and be ye separate saith God and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you unto myself the only time that confusion comes is when I begin to ponder is this really right and then I begin to dabble in seducing spirits and other doctrines that's when the confusion comes in but as long as I hold fast to my faith as long as I profess my faith there is no confusion And remember salvation is a faith Praise God. Let's clap our hands and let's worship Him again. Oh, that's it. Let's give Him a high praise. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not wondering whether I'm a man or not. I'm a man and I like being a man. If you're a woman, you ought to like being a woman. You ought to be praying that God gives you a good man. One. Not a bunch. And if you're a man, you ought to be praying God gives you a woman. One. And then just wait on him. Let him do it. The confusion comes in when you start listening to doctrines of devils. Let's stand and let's give God another high praise. Can we do that? Hallelujah. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. We honor your great name, Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. Praise God. What an awesome church service tonight. Thank you all for being here. It's a pretty good crowd on a Friday night. Hallelujah. Garcia's funeral service will be at 1.30, 1 o'clock tomorrow. If you want to come and honor this man, at least be here for Sister Garcia and Sister Brother Bobby and Sister Sandy Garcia and the family, Brother Fabian.
and honor these people that, that have lost this loved one. God bless you. Love one another. You are dismissed. Thank you.